Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. As you can see, I'm in a different setting today. I'm usually down in the garden doing yard work or in the kitchen with you guys, but today I'm up here in my office slash our guest room, and I wanted to have a sit down and chatty video with you today. Um, it's a beautiful day here in Washington, and so if you hear a lawnmower in the background, my neighbor has decided that today is the perfect day, which it is, to mow his lawn. And so I'm sorry if you can hear that. Here in the United States, we are gearing up for the best meal of the year, in my opinion, and that is Thanksgiving. And I wanted to share with you some hosting tips that I have. Um, hosting Thanksgiving for the first time, if you're thinking about it, or if you've maybe you did it last year and you're like debating maybe not doing it this year, hosting can be an intimidating thing, especially on a day like Thanksgiving where there's lots of food and lots of people around. So over the years, I've come up with a few tips and tricks that we use to help relieves a little bit of the stress on Thanksgiving and make the day run a little bit more smoothly. I've written this all down in a blog post that I'll link in the description box below. So after you've watched this video, you'll have something to reference. So it might be a little long winded, but grab a cup of tea or your favorite warm beverage and let's get into my 10 tips for hosting Thanksgiving. So my first tip is to get started on all the non food prep tasks at least a week in advance. So things like getting all of your serving dishes out that you plan to use, like do you have what you need to serve the meal? Do you have enough napkins? Do you have enough plates? Do you have enough forks? Do you have enough seating for the amount of people that are going to be coming? Do you need a kitchen tool that for a dish that you don't have? Like this is all like the things that you need to think about when you're about to host Thanksgiving that will save you the headache down the road. I wrote a blog post last year that's really helpful and it's all about how to get your house ready for Thanksgiving. It's full of non-food prep tasks like washing your dishes and your linens beforehand or cleaning out your refrigerator and your oven. Um, I'll link that below for you to go and check out, but it's full of a lot of really useful tips for the non-food prep tasks that you may not think about before Thanksgiving. My second tip is to split the menu. You do not have to prepare the entire Thanksgiving dinner by yourself if you're hosting. In fact, I don't recommend that. First of all, preparing that much food for however many people can get very overwhelming. And then it also can get very expensive. So Thanksgiving is all about the potluck life. So have, you know, have people bring things. You don't have to prepare every single thing. What I recommend is writing out a menu of what you'd like to see, you know, turkey, mashed potatoes, whatever side dishes, and include desserts. Make sure you include desserts in that. And then pick out the dishes that you like to make or that you want to make for the meal and then assign everything else. It's super simple and it's a great way to get people involved in the meal and come together and you know, eat delicious food that everyone has prepared. I also think that it's a great idea to assign people to bring beverages. What we like to do is we like to provide the non-alcoholic beverages for the meal. And then we ask different people to bring like a nice bottle of wine or some beer to share. And it's just always worked out really well for us. The dishes that we like to prepare when we're hosting are the turkey, a pie, pumpkin, because that's my favorite pie, and I have to have it every Thanksgiving, and then cranberry sauce, because that's my husband's favorite thing to prepare. We do have the canned stuff on hand, because I know that there are people in both camps who are like, either like one or the other. Um, and then we also prepare the dressing or stuffing. 
I call it stuffing, but I don't stuff the bird, so I guess it's technically dressing. But th those are the dishes that we like to prepare, and then we assign everything else. And this has worked really well for us, and it really helps reduce stress on the day of so that you don't have to prepare so much. My third tip is to make a schedule for the day. Now, this may seem like a really tedious task. You can do it a week before, but you'd be surprised. There is so much going on the day of Thanksgiving. You're running around, you're preparing whatever you need to prepare. You're getting the house ready for guests. You know, it's really easy to get, you know, get behind or forget something. So, I like to make a schedule so that I know exactly what I need to be doing at certain times. I schedule every half hour, and I know that's a little crazy, but it helps me so much when I, you know, can hardly think because my head's gonna explode with everything that I have to get done that day. So what I like to do when I'm making my schedule is I like to start from the time that I want the meal, I want us to eat, and I work my way backwards. You know, when you're making this schedule, things to take into consideration, like if you're preparing the turkey, how long does it take the turkey to bake? How long does the turkey need to rest before I can carve it? This is gonna determine when you need to get the turkey in the oven by. And then also, what side dishes are you preparing that day? This will, you know, this will determine when do I need to start the mashed potatoes or when do I need to get the dressing in the oven to be reheated? How long is that gonna take? You know, things like that. Don't forget, like this is so, ch this, no, this is such an easy thing to forget because you've got so much going on. When do I need to feed my pet? Like I put that down um, so that they are fed their meal as well and they don't get, you know, they don't get hunger pains or get jealous and people start feeding them turkey or whatever. I don't know if that happens at your house, but our cats, we have cats and they beg like dogs. So <laughs> to avoid that, I make sure to schedule in that time when they need to be fed. And I usually feed them a half hour earlier than I would normally so they have eaten and I can move their stuff out of the way if it's in the way of seating or whatnot. And then also make sure that you schedule in time for yourself to get ready. And I make time, I like make sure that my husband has a time to get ready and make, you know, you can, there's been times where it's been an hour before the guests are supposed to arrive and I'm still in my scrubby clothes preparing everything or cleaning something. And then I'm like, oh crap, I need to get in and take a shower and get ready for the day. So make sure that you schedule in that time. I also take a daily walk, so I like to make sure that I keep that in my daily, or keep that in the schedule for Thanksgiving Day, because I like to stick to that routine. And it's just a nice way to start the morning before all the craziness starts for Thanksgiving Day. Basically, just get as specific as you can, and this will help you stay on task for the day. Tip number four is a simple one, but can make or break your meal. Do not forget to defrost your turkey. A frozen turkey can take a few days to defrost fully, and you don't want it to come to the day where you're gonna, or the day, even the day before, you're gonna be preparing it and say, I forgot to take it out of the freezer. So what I do is I set a reminder on my calendar to send me a notification so that I can get that process started at least a few days prior. Um, make sure that you follow safety guidelines on defrosting a turkey and below in the description box I'll link an article from Martha Stewart on how to safely defrost your turkey. Tip number five is to prepare as much as you can in advance. The great thing about a lot of Thanksgiving dishes is that they can be prepared either the day before or even a few days before. So things like pies, cranberry sauce, rolls, your stuffing or dressing, that can all be prepared in advance. And then you can either, you know, like for the dressing, you can like reheat it the day of and it's perfectly fine. So make sure that you decide what you can prepare in advance and take full advantage of that. This will reduce the amount of cooking that you have to, to do the day of. 
Also, there's no shame in buying pre-made items like rolls or a pre-made pie. This will save you a lot of time and hassle and they're just things that you have on hand that you don't have to think about. Tip number six and seven are along a similar vein, but tip number six is don't stress about the turkey. Let's be honest, I don't look forward to Thanksgiving so that I can eat a boatload of turkey. I look forward to Thanksgiving so that I can have a little bit of turkey with a plate full of Thanksgiving sides. So my recommendation is to Google a simple roast turkey recipe and go with that and let the side dishes do all the talking. Tip number seven is to not stress about appetizers. If I'm running behind the day of, appetizers are usually the first thing that I cut from my schedule if I decided to make some, but most people don't like to fill up on appetizers before they have their meal, so don't stress about making sure that you have them. If you do still want to have Thanksgiving appetizers, pick something that you can prepare in advance or assign it for another guest to bring to share with everyone. Tip number eight is to stick to dishes that you know are crowd pleasers. Thanksgiving is not a time to go in and get experimental in the kitchen. People like, people have memories around food at Thanksgiving and maybe they don't want some weird addition to their mac and cheese or a different type of, I don't know, sweet potato recipe. They want what they want. They like what they like. So to save yourself the headache and keep it simple, stick with dishes that you know people will love and want to eat year after year. Tip number nine is to take help when it's offered. I'll be honest, this is something that I struggle with because I want to be the hostess with the mostest. I want my guests to come and enjoy themselves and relax, but that can be very stressful to take on every single thing. So when your guests start arriving and someone asks, is there anything that I can do to help? Make sure that you take advantage of their generosity and assign them a task to do. So let them start loading the dishwasher. Let them put the finishing touches on a dish. Let them organize the flow of how everyone's going to dish up. So those are less things that you have to think about later or how or before the meal, you know, let them fin let them finish setting the table. You know, there are a lot of little things that you can have people do that will take off your plate and reduce your stress level so that you too can enjoy the day and enjoy everyone's company. My last tip is to relax and enjoy the day. I know that it can seem stressful, but I urge you to just take a step back, take a deep breath and enjoy the day. Thanksgiving is always about getting together with family and friends and catching up over a really great meal. So don't put too much pressure on yourself to make everything perfect. Chances are something's gonna fall through the cracks or something's gonna go wrong and that's fine. N nothing is perfect. I think that, you know, just making the effort of hosting is enough and I think your family and friends are going to really appreciate your efforts on making the day as special as possible for everyone. And that's it for my 10 tips on hosting Thanksgiving. I hope that you found it helpful and if you have anything to add or any other tips that you may have for hosting, leave them down in the comments below so that other people can be helped out with those. Again, I'll link this blog post below so that you can reference these tips. If you made it to the end of this video, I really appreciate it. I know that it may have been a little long-winded, but I had a lot of information to give and if you did, leave a comment below on your what is your favorite Thanksgiving side dish. I think mine is Mine is for sure Brussels sprout, roast Brussels sprouts, and then I love the mashed potatoes and turkey gravy. My mom makes the best turkey gravy, <laughs> and those are just the quintessential Thanksgiving 
dishes, side dishes for me that we always have on the table. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up as it really supports my channel. And don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss more of the fun holiday things that I have coming up. And I hope that you're having a great day wherever you are, and I will see you in the next one.